Hey guys, uh, I'm just going to be sitting behind the camera here having a chat. Now, uh, sometimes uh, when I have the time, I'll set up and sit in front of the camera for a talk. Uh, but I just get so busy quite often, and uh, this is just makes it nice and simple for me. Uh, and it's quite good. You can see it in my hand as well as I go over some things, nice and close up. Uh, so it is, uh, it is good for some things like this. Uh, you know, for more of the expensive models, if I do have the time, you know, like the Imolent SR32 I reviewed, you know, I definitely have to get in front of the camera for that. Um, it just makes it so much better to uh, look at, uh, you know, to see somebody talking rather than just staring at their hands. It can get a bit boring sometimes. Uh, so, the this is an awesome, awesome flashlight, in my opinion, the SC33. Great, I love it. I love the the design. The build quality is pretty good. You got a clip, not the best retention on here, um, but at least you got a clip. Uh, it's okay. I haven't found really any negatives about it. You've got this uh, rear switch here, rear electronic switch, which is very good. Nice feel to it. Um, yeah, so you've got uh, USB Type-C charging here. I was a little bit concerned about this flap being on the rear where you're holding it for the switch. Um, and uh, sure, your, your finger sort of brushes over it. Um, and it can sort of lift up this little nub there, but it doesn't actually lift and open up the cover. Um, so I haven't found that to actually be a problem. Uh, so, you yeah, know, not really nice grip on this. The knurling on here is very good. There's no sharp edges on this, which is usually what I expect on other Sofern lights is that the edges haven't been sort of rounded off properly. It is a little bit on the head here, on the fin. Oh, there's little grooves here, but nothing, nothing like some of their other models. It's actually really nice. Uh, the the tail switch here is recessed a bit, so um, it's not going to be coming on very easily. Turning on in your pocket or a bag, it's actually pretty good. Uh, yeah, so battery status indicator on the side. Uh, this is not a stainless steel bezel, by the way. This is just a grey colour here. Uh, orange peel textured reflector. And... Uh, You've got the Cree XHP 70.3 high intensity LED, so this is a factory domeless LED. Uh, beautiful tint on this. Uh, I, I mean, uh, yeah, the tint, the beam, uh, the color temperature, so around 5000 Kelvin color temperature on here. And yeah, you know, the beam profile is really lovely. There's no sort of artifacts there. It does sort of um, reflect off this bezel a bit, like it shows it up. It's not like a perfectly round. Um, beam, uh, but it's not a it hasn't been an issue for me at all. It's it's fine, no problem. Um, so the two issues on the slide, and uh, is uh, it doesn't really take away anything from using using the light. Um, uh, you know, it just depends on on you. But the, like the the one thing that is really quite annoying for me is. Uh, that automatic lockout. If you turn the flashlight off and then you wait, um, you wait for a minute, it will lock itself. Uh, and that's quite good in some situations. Uh, when you put it down for a while or you throw it into a bag, it's going to lock itself, which is, can be quite good. Uh, but uh, there's no way to start on moonlight and increase in brightness. As soon as you unlock it, you're gonna be, it's going to turn on to its last used mode. Uh, and if that's high, you know, that's not always what you want it to do. Um, and you can't double click from t from off to get to turbo either if it's on lockout. So, um, you know, you, can, you can't get into strobe, you can't get into turbo. If you want to use it tactically, you can't do that. Uh, so it's, uh, it's going to take away a little bit from the light for some. Uh, but I have uh, reported that to Sofern. Looks like they're going to uh, at least include an option to be able to uh, disable that. So that would be good. Uh, yeah, so you, in lockout, you've got the hold for momentary moonlight. Release and it turns off. Double press, unlocks it. So I had it on um, eco there, so it turned on to eco. We had it, say, on, on high. 
and you double press, it comes straight back onto high. Yeah, that's just something I really don't like. Um, you know, just to always have it um, doing that locking out to not be able to disable it. That's what I hate. Uh, the other one is the turbo. So this is advertised at 5,200 lumens. I measured just over 4,200. So it's like they slapped on an extra 1,000 for advertising. So it's, it is a bit disappointing uh, that Sofin do that. But it doesn't actually take away anything from the site. I, I didn't expect that it was going to meet those, um, to meet that spec anyway. And I think for the size of this, it's it's pretty decent, you know, to f hit 4,200 lumens, it's not bad at all. Um, but the the, uh, the turbo, is, as soon as you turn it on, it will start reducing in brightness. Straight away, it's not based on temperature, it just, it just drops as soon as you turn it on. Uh, and so, turn on 4,200 lumens, by 30 seconds it's like 2,300 lumens. So it's really, it's a 2,300 lumen flashlight right here, by the ANSI FL1 standard. But, um, uh, to be honest, I would far rather manufacturers get out of this mindset of having to have the highest possible turbo, um, you know, lumen output. I'd far rather something at like 2,300 lumens, at, at, that's what it drops down to, I'd far rather that lasting like 10 minutes. That's what I would far rather uh, prefer because I, I love um, higher sustainable output rather than um, short turbo bursts. Uh, out on the farm, you know, I like something that's going to give me good lighting, good stable lighting. Um, and uh, this is uh, really good for that. So I'm, I'm quite happy with how it beha behaves, really. But there's, uh, you know, some people are going to hate that. They want the highest duration of the highest turbo they can get. Um, and then once it gets to 50 degrees, that's when it drops down. But yeah, so it sounds like the, I've told Sofern, and that might be changed in a later batch. Uh, but this can hold 870 lumens, which is really good. Uh, without getting too hot, it's great. And if you have a look at the Sofin SP35 here, it's not that much bigger. Yeah, you've got a bit of a larger head here, but if you have a look at the body, um, it's it's not a whole lot bigger. If you have a look at the tail cap there, you know, that's not much bigger at all. This holds about 500 lumens um over the whole run and this is 870 so not a whole lot bigger in size and you get a quite a good little bump in output there uh you know, it's quite a bit bigger than the sc32 here but yeah so and then you've got the sp33s here and this holds about 1100 lumens but it is a bit more chunkier. I look quite like the clip on here. I don't like the side switch on this. It's very mushy, heaps of play in it, bit stiff. Um, don't really like that at all. So I do love the electronic tail switch on here. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. And uh yeah. Yep, I I uh you know I I really do recommend it. Uh, despite those two things, I just out on the farm and use. Uh, if I just ignore those graphs and just use it and just appreciate it for what it is, um, I don't even care. Uh, I think it's fantastic as is. Yeah, so that's my thoughts, guys. Uh, let me know what you think, and uh, thanks for watching.